Welcome to part 2 of how to interact with objects. In this video we will go over how to interact with deformable objects using physics. These are simulated using the finite element method. Unlike rigid objects, soft bodies can deform under external forces and collisions. We will spawn a set of soft cubes and see how to set their nodal positions and velocities, along with kinematic commands to the mesh nodes to move the soft body. This code is very similar to the rigid body tutorial in part 1. Therefore, I will only cover the changes. So, in a similar fashion, we can create deformable objects by creating an instance of the deformable object class by passing the configuration object to its deformable object constructor. This one wraps around the mesh qubit configuration, which we covered in tutorial 2. It will have specific deformable body properties along with physics attributes such as Poisson values and Young's modulus, which gives it the deformable attributes. We then set the initial state to a height of 1 meter and return it to the main function. The simulation setup is also very similar to the previous tutorial. However, now, unlike rigid bodies and articulations, deformable objects have a different state representation. The state of a deformable object is defined by the nodal positions and velocities of the mesh. These nodal positions and velocities are defined in the simulation world frame and are stored in the deformable object.data attribute. So first we will create a modifiable copy of the kinematic targets for all vertices. We can then update this copy without affecting the original simulation data. Inside the loop, we use the default nodal state W attribute to get the default nodal state of the spawned object prims, which correspond to the initial state we set before. We then apply randomization in relation to the origins to the position, as well as the orientation with quaternion operations, which calculate rotations in a fancy way, but are more efficient. We then update the nodal states into the simulation buffer by calling write nodal state to sim. This ensures the simulation has the correct initial configurations before starting the next step. The nodal kinematic target array is then updated to reflect the nodal state. The positions are then synchronized with the current state. These are then also set to 1, which indicate that all vertices are now free, meaning they are not kinematically constrained anymore. Finally, we clear any internal buffers, caches, or temporary data related to the deformable object by calling the reset method. To understand more about the modifications we can apply on vertices and their kinematics, we adjust the Z coordinate, which is the second index in the vector, for two cubes, cube 0 and cube 3, at the first vertex, which is the index 0. This applies on every step, which creates a motion upwards. We also have to constrain the exact same vertex in order to explicitly control its position. And like before, we have to update these to the simulation. As the remaining code is the same as in part 1, we conclude the video by summarizing that we learned how to reset, control, and simulate deformable objects in ISIC Lab. If you have found the tutorial helpful and want to see more, consider subscribing. Also comment on what you would like to see next. Thank you. Bye.